Okay, um, we're in Unit 20. Um, unit 20 introduces you to a whole bunch of scattered random things. It's like, since it's the last book in the book, it's as though the author has made a list of all the, uh, it's all the crumbs that fell off the table. <laughs> it's a bunch of things that don't have a lot to do with each other, but are good to know. So, the first one is these weird verbal adjectives, okay? The book has a bad way of accounting for the formation of them. We put a few of them, um, police put a few of them on the blackboard. Um, the, the, their adjectives derive from the root of the verb. So, uh, and you shouldn't pay attention to the rules in the book. They, are, they don't, you know, they make a list on pages 688 and 689 of about 20 of them that don't follow their rules. So even the, their system is bankrupt. So let's stick with the notion. No, notionally, it's a r verbal root with a with a suffix te os, okay? Um, and we'll talk about the syntax of them. So you got luo lu te os a on, didume do te os a on, archo arch te os. You can't have a he there. In Greek, the he gets assimilated before the tau into a, an unaspirated consonant. Okay? Um, and the same with grapho graph teos instead of graph teos. So formally I don't think these things are challenging. You can see the root that they're from um, and make a good guess about what they mean. So let's talk about the syntax of them. Um, there are ba there are basically a two, two ways of constructing them in, in sentences. One in which they are adjectives that are modifying other nouns and then they're active uh, forms. So that's the first example up there. Tauta poeta a estin hemim. Okay. I mean, these ones are passive. Sorry, <laughs> the ones when they're, geez, when they are when they are adjectives modifying other nouns in the sentence, they're passive. So tauta poeta a estin hemim means these things are to be done by us. It's a dative of agent hemim, and tauta. Is the subject why I tell us the adjective agreeing with it? Estin is your neuter, since it's a neuter plural subject, you have a singular verb. So these things are to be done by us. Or you could tra translate it, we must do these things, turning it into an active statement. Okay? The other model is exemplified by the second sentence up here, in which you've got Socrate, dative singular of Socrates. Decane, accusative singular of decay in the sense of punishment. Dotaon, your verbal adjective in the neuter nominative singular. And estin, third person singular verb, um, to be. So what's happened is it's, you have an impersonal construction. Tauta poie ta is a personal construction, if you will, in which the adjective is modifying another noun or pronoun. This one is impersonal. Um, but you can't readily translate this into English as an impersonal verb. I think the best way to understand it, stand these things, is to is to translate the impersonal construction as active. There is an obligation on the part of Socrates to pay the penalty. Okay, so dote onestin, there is an obligation to pay or to give a penalty, pay the penalty is the idiom, to pay the penalty, decane, on Socrates. So notice that it's active. It's not to be paid, the penalty to be paid. You've got a direct object of it. Whereas in Telta Poeta, it's an adjective that's, that's passive. So let's look at some more examples. Let me see. There we go. Here we have hemin tauta rapteon estin. Again, the impersonal construction. Uh, there is an obligation on our part, hemin, to us, to write these things. Okay. Um, there. Obligation. Okay. On our part. Uh, 
that's the hey mean, the data of the agent, and delta is the direct object. Okay, and who mean to to lu tea est in? What's happened is that we've got instead of lu tea or lu tea, you have fluctuation between the neuter accusative sing or neuter nominative singular of these verbal adjectives prop te on and the neuter nominative plural. Notice the verb will remain singular because effectively the, it's agreeing, the estimate is agreeing with Lute in some way, but you can see, you see both, okay? So it's not just neuter nominative singular, but neuter nominative plural. So this means there is an obligation on your part, who being, to release these people. And last, the last variation on this weird syntax is when the personal agent is not in the dative, but in the accusative case, which is a little bit mind-boggling. But so the last sentence means, on on us, tau ta grab te onestin. There's an obligation to write these things. You got in effect a direct object, and a second object that's secondary. Interesting grammar, but strange. Okay, so. Key thing, just to sum up, the, when they're agreeing with other nouns, these adjectives are passive. When they're in an impersonal construction, neither the neuter nominative or singular or honor of plural, they are um, expressive actively of an obligation, and they often govern a dative of agent, sometimes an accusative of agent, and a direct object.